Hello and welcome to Small Plates. This is Lucy Mason in London, by way of Sydney, and I'm excited to be asked to introduce Wayne and his career advice podcast for musicians and the people who help them. The song he has chosen to open with this month is one I wrote and recorded back in 2014, called White As Snow. This song is not just a favourite of Wayne's, but it's also a favourite of mine, as it was a bit of a breakthrough song as a writer and as an artist. Although the song is five years old, it will always remain as one of the songs I am still most proud of. So, welcome again to the Small Plates podcast and many thanks for tuning in. My name is Lucy Mason and this is White as Snow. How skilled we are at pursuing love chase after what will become the end of us we've gone in search of every scheme the more the words the less our meaning we are just insane
That was Lucy Mason out of the UK. Thank you for introducing Small Plates, Lucy. Hey, it's Wayne Martin, and this is a podcast designed for musicians and other creatives. Season one of Small Plates Podcast 104 today is called What's Your Sign? S-I-N-E, not S-I-G-N. In the past, we've used our imaginations to visualize some simple images. But today's topic, it doesn't translate at all to the imagination approach. It's important that you know what a sign or sine, or sometimes idiots like me have said sinus. It's important that you know what a sign is and how to reference it. Because today on Small Plates, we are going to use a graphic while we discuss planning strategies for your artistic career. A sign visual aid designed just for this episode is included on the M3 website podcast page. And a link is in the description so that you can follow along. How fancy is that? By the way, if you're listening on YouTube, it's on your screen if you're driving or exercising, you will want to make sure you press pause until you can actually view the graphic as you follow along. If you choose not to follow along with the graphic, this podcast is going to make no sense. It's a throwaway. So for today's bite-sized strategy, I'm going to show you how to use a sine waveform to plan out the most significant events of your career. The first thing to note on our graphic is the notion of on cycle and off cycle. And the horizontal red line from left to right as the passing of time. So as time moves from left to right on that line, you can see that there are points plotted. So A, B, G, H, and I are plotted off cycle and C, D, E, F are plotted on cycle. If there was just one word to describe off cycle on this waveform, it would be preparation. If there was just one word to describe on cycle on the waveform, it would be presentation. You may want to see if you can draw a correlation between when the waveform is traveling up as gaining momentum and when the waveform begins to travel down as losing momentum. But this approach can only apply if you state that the momentum isn't yours as an artist, which should be much more constant but rather what the public perceives as momentum or exposure. You can make as many plot points as you like. Big ones like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. You can see those as major events you can identify. You can have more or less of those at your discretion. And then less important points on the line, you can draw an arrow to describe what happens in between those alphabetical plot points. That's noted on your graph as the number one. The lines of the waveform are actually hundreds of dots connected to make a line. So you can point to any part of the line and mark it as a smaller event with a number. So let's talk first about off cycle below the timeline. What should a creator do when they are off cycle? What's the definition of the term? Off cycle, the first two points are A and B below the timeline, refers to the time frame in which you create your work and then prepare for the time frame in which it is about to come public. 
And the reason a sine wave is the best representation for off cycle is because it is in essence a ramp up across time. As time moves forward, you become closer to leaving your off cycle status, gaining more momentum, storing more content, more and more and more. So what kinds of things do successful artists do when they are off cycle? Well, you will choose your own specifics to attach to each of our plotted events, to A and to B, uh, relevant to your career and your craft. And you should. It's your sign form. It's your sign wave form. But for inspiration, I'm going to give you 20 non sequitur words and phrases of how you might approach off-cycle time as an artist. Here are some suggestions. Most artists I know, by the way, have a harder time naming and achieving their off-cycle goals than they do their on-cycle. So let's get you started. Create. Refine. Study. Finish. Collaborate. Network. Explore, observe, research, learn, practice, record, dress rehearsal, compose, photograph, edit, master, strategize, team build, approve and the list goes on and on in essence everything having to do with making whatever it is you make happens off cycle and then preparing collateral or support materials to help you market what you create also happens off cycle off cycle most often refers to pre-launch when I'm at a social event and someone introduces me as a manager and then cocktail party banter turns into famous musicians and such, it's inevitable that someone who is standing there with me will say, hey, whatever happened to so-and-so? She was all over the radio two years ago. You couldn't escape her. And now her whole career is over. She's washed up. She doesn't even make music anymore. And I usually respond by saying, She's most likely off cycle. Everyone that creates needs time to create. Maybe she just ran out of songs for a little while. That usually shines a light on their harsh judgment of musicians and actors and choreographers and authors who have been hunkered down over a mixing console or a laptop or pacing in a rehearsal space for days and weeks and months and even years. That's everything that off cycle is. It is a time to get ready. And everyone either starts their career off cycle or goes off cycle. The blue dotted and dashed sine wave rhythm is a natural rhythm that repeats. That's why we have two complete waveforms on the graphic. I didn't label the second wave because you'll see it just replicates the first. The wave just starts all over again. And the idea of going back into off cycle mode, that's part of that. Look at point A and look at point I. And you'll see that they are in identical locations on two different waves. But both are off cycle. And both are key moments that must be identified. For some artists, they represent exactly the same event, but just at a different point in time. Still, for other artists, they aren't the same event. So for A, where you might be writing and tracking an album, it could be that the next time you're off cycle at I, 
you might be preparing for a tour. For a musician, off cycle, that portion of the line in front of event A could be write songs for an album, track songs for an EP, mix the songs for an EP, so that point A could represent the actual mastering and completion of your EP project. Then what happens? You start a million little points that connect to get to point B. And point B might include EP graphics, lining up a distributor, a lyric video, shooting and editing a support tool like a performance video, creating other content that you're going to need later, on and on. In this particular example, I've left a little bit of time between point B and the red timeline above it where you transition to on cycle so that you can draw in some smaller arrows to plan smaller events and maybe begin pre-promotion and map out your fan messaging, teasing on your socials, leaking something to your fans or to the media here and there, maybe an industry showcase or a private event for your most super of super fans. When you cross up and out of off cycle, traveling up that waveform and you start moving through your on cycle waveform above the timeline, you are now exposed and open. Time only moves forward, so there is no backing up. On cycle, in a word, as we said, is presentation. Here's a side note. You can stop if you have to. You know, sometimes creators become afraid to present. It's a human reaction. So there's no judgment from me when they stop moving, when they stop moving here. Time moves on, but the wavelength data points are frozen. And you know, that can actually happen anywhere on the waveform, but in my experience, it most often happens here, crossing from off cycle to on cycle. Fear of sharing what has been kept secret, fear of rejection or failure, losing your financial support or a band member jump ship. Careers that just stop for good or careers that pause for an extended period. So now, now that you're on cycle, you're in visibility mode. And again, for inspiration, I'm going to give you 20 non sequitur words and phrases on how you might approach on cycle as an artist. Some suggestions for inspiration. Debut, market and sell, release, engage, travel, collaborate, premiere, team build, expand, distribute, accelerate, communicate, Create, respond, publicize, stimulate, promote, share, develop, inspire. Did you notice that some words were repeats? I'm suggesting that no matter where you are on cycle or off cycle, you could be doing the same kinds of tasks to reach different kinds of goals, or perhaps you are still just doing the exact same thing you were doing when you were off cycle. Think about the objectives you should set for your career that are constant, no matter your cycle status. 
musicians. Please look at point C. This could be where you drop your streaming content and begin to market it. Point D is the peak of activity because it sits on top of the waveform. So this could be your big press campaign. You release a single to terrestrial radio. Your video content is uploaded and advertised and monetized. The Instagram stories roll out and the like. Point E could be your first regional tour as you begin to wind down your initiatives that support this release. Remember, you are soon to go off cycle. So what is left to do? And point F, well, that's still something new to present. You choose what it is, but it's not as important as what came at point D. Look where it is. It's the last hurrah of this big push before the timeline takes you back off cycle. So think of what makes sense to live on that plot line. Take a deep breath. Point G puts us back off cycle. But there are likely arrows of small events you will identify between F and G you're going to gather all that mailing list data. You're going to put that in a database. You're going to inventory your merch to see what you sold and what you need to make more of. You'll want to do all that when you're not consumed with presentation and before you have new preparation goals. G, point G, could be a month of writing new material or taking meetings to share your uptick in your social numbers and streams with a possible manager or with a possible agent. And then I, well, last time that was called A, and you were writing and studio tracking last time around, are you doing that again? Or are you doing something different? Go through a cycle, see how it feels. Change it up. This is your planning tool. This one waveform is everything in one place, all lined up. So you shouldn't work off of more than one at a time. Use one waveform from off cycle to on cycle, back to off cycle. Your first complete waveform might be on a six month calendar or that red timeline might designate a 12 or 24 month timeline. You decide what makes the most sense when you put your time, your resources, everything into consideration, customize this tool. It's for you. Some creators are more comfortable and are more productive off cycle. Some are more at peace and more accomplished on cycle. I suggest you determine which one you are as part of your creative self-discovery, looking back on your first completed on and off cycle waveform. That's when you look at it. And then you can build your second one with that understanding of where you perform best in mind. And there you have it. You've planned and executed preparation and presentation. Did today's strategy excite you? Do you believe you are more equipped to plan your career than before? Hit the subscribe button, share small plates with other creators. One of the most comprehensive and well-respected books on the music industry is by Jeff and Todd Brayback, and it is in its eighth edition. It's called Music, Money, and Success, The Insider's Guide to Making Money in the Music Business. This book is not as obscure as other books you might hear about on small plates. Music, Money, and Success is the gold standard, very popular, and you probably know of someone who has read it or is reading it right now. 
Also, if you have topic ideas, please email us at smallplatesuggestionbox at gmail.com. You've been listening to Small Plates, bite-sized career strategies for musicians, other creators, and their collaborators, hosted by music manager and veteran career strategist, R. Wayne Martin. Small Plates is a monthly subscription podcast produced by M3 New York City. Click subscribe to receive new Small Plates insights and strategies on the first Friday of each month, only on Apple Podcasts. Thanks for listening.